Uh, greetings one and all. Welcome back to my kitchen here today. Well, I'm going to be making a nice steak uh, roulade with a nice um, yeah, stuffing. You know, it's kind of my own recipe, although yeah, part of the main part of the stuffing will be like a um, pistachio and parsley um, pesto. All right, let's get on with it. Alrighty, so I'm just going to whiz up my uh, stuffing here for my steak. So the first thing I've got here is about two cups of just loosely chopped parsley leaves. So they go in. Nice fresh parsley. Now I've got one cup of pistachio nuts. There you go. I've got half a cup of parmesan and pecorino grated cheese. I've got three cloves of garlic. Just got the juice, half a lemon. So yeah, it's just a couple of tablespoons and just a tiny little drizzle of olive oil to start with if we need to put more in we shall get it with them alrighty guys now once that's um been whizzing up for a little while. It's still fairly like um, dryish. I added a little bit more olive oil, but just another little drizzle. And the reason I don't want it totally wet, well, two reasons. Because we're going to be rolling it up in our steak. And we don't want it all just dripping out. But the other reason is I'm going to be adding another ingredient to our pesto. And what I've got is a couple of. Um, fresh figs that I've just sliced up, chopped up and I'm just going to be giving this mix like a few pulses I don't care if it's not totally sort of blended up there's like still chunks of fig in it, that's fine Take this blade out. We're done with our chopping. And the last thing I want to add to our stuffing mixture here, and I'm just going to do it in in the same um, container, is I've got a couple of slices of prosciutto that I've just sort of roughly chopped up, and this time. I'm just going to be mixing that by hand with the spoon. So yeah, just sort of mix it through. Alrighty, now that I've got my um, stuffing mix all ready to go, next thing to do is deal with our bit of um, steak here. Now I'm just using a old cheapo bit of rump steak, um, which had quite a nice layer of fat going around the top there, but I've cut that off because I do want to um, spread it out a little bit make it a bit thinner and that would have that not so much the fat but the membrane there would have stopped it so i've just got my board sitting on a folded up tea towel and i'm just going to give this the bashity bash got that flattened out a bit more um, so I'm just going to take 
some of my stuff in there and stick it on and I'm just going to press it down onto that and because I didn't add too much oil it's sort of still quite dry and it does press down and flatten out nicely and we're just going to leave a bit of an edge around the outside there have a little bit left but that's all right so what I'm going to do now obviously is and I've washed my hands I've got thoroughly clean hands is I'm going to roll this up So, and wrap that up, uh, tie it up a bit. One, I'll slip it under there. Now I've said on my channel before, when I've done these sort of things, I'm the king of the granny knot. So you won't see any fancy trushing trussing techniques of me um, but yeah granny knots work so who cares alrighty that's ready to go now you might have noticed over here I've also got some um, baked potatoes ready to go so all I've done with those is I par cooked them I just boiled them now I've just given them a little forking on top and I've got some lard ready to go so they're going to go in the oven as well but I am going to start this off on top of the stove alrighty guys so I've just got my um, uh, it's actually one of my smaller size fry pans I, I think it's going to fit this in it um, so all I'm going to do first is um, I am going to be finishing it off in the oven in this small fry pan. The reason, part of the reason I need to use this small fry pan is <laughs> it can go in the oven and my other bigger one can't. So all I've got in here is a little bit of olive oil that I'm just heating up. I've seasoned one side of that already with some salt, sea salt. Some pepper. Uh, we'll just do the same now that it's in. And like I say, all we're doing at this stage is just um, browning it up and be generous with the seasoning. Alrighty guys, so yeah, I've taken that um, meat off the heat, it's looking alright, um, now that it's seared, so all I'm going to do now, I've got the oven preheated to 160 degrees Celsius, I'm just going to whack it in, it's still in this container, but as you can see I've just put a bit of foil over the top of it, and I'm going to leave it in there for not too long, maybe 25 to 30 minutes. Alrighty, so as, as you can see I've put my spuds 
out of the uh, oven there. They're cooked. My meat's cooked. I've just sort of wrapped it back up in that foil a bit. Just let it rest a bit. So I've got that fry, same fry pan and um, just be careful guys, just remember <laughs> when you pull a fry pan like that out of the uh, oven the handle's going to be really hot. I did remember, thank goodness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some gravy. So I've just got like about a tablespoon of flour. I've just put this on heat. Our, um, our pan there and I'm just going to sprinkle that over those pan juices yeah, maybe a little bit more because I like a lot of gravy alrighty now once that flour starts um, yeah, browning up and yeah, absorbing some of those pan juices. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got some beef stock here, and I just brought some beef stock. So we're going to add around about 150 mils of that, and just add it gradually. Oh, and don't touch that. <laughs> stir that um, flour up and get the lumps out of that flour and the main thing is we're scraping all those caramelized bits off the bottom that flavour into your gravy. <clears throat> Alrighty, next thing I want to add to my gravy, and this is something <laughs> my grandma taught me, is you want to put about a teaspoon, a good heap teaspoon of Vegemite. But if you can't get Vegemite, just use any sort of yeast extract. Last but definitely not least, now that we've got that um, flour, Vegemite and uh, beef stock going, as so I've got some Merlot here, I'm going to whack in about a cup of that. I'll make them way too much gravy for what I need, but I don't care. I'll save some of it because I just love gravy. I'm a big fan of that Paul Kelly song. Alrighty. <clears throat> um, so this has been resting for a while. I'm just going to cut through it. The steak's as tender as anything. Just um, spin it around, give you a bit of a look. Alrighty, 
So as you can see, I've served up a plate of my uh, roulade here, beef roulade, um, plenty of gravy, some of my beautiful um, crispy spuds there. Look, my beef just cooked up beautifully. Uh, I don't know if I can do this, but I just want to show you if I can. No, it's going to fall to bits. It's still really nice and pink on the inside, so I only cooked it for about 20 minutes in the oven, and that was perfect. I wish I could show you up close. Hang on, see if that one will go up. So it's still nice and pink. Um, man, even on these end bits, like it's cooked. It's not raw, but it's just cooked beautifully. Oh, come on. Yeah, I know. Anyway, let's try a bit. And that bit's on the fork now. Um, yum, yum, yum. Get a bit of that gravy. Um, there's no point showing it, showing it to you with the gravy on it because you can't see it. That is so good. <laughs> Yum. That's a really, really nice gravy. Any gravy you make with wine usually turns out good. These spuds. I mean, I didn't really show you how I did them. There wasn't much to it. I just boiled them. They were just buds cut in half. Boiled them. Uh, then just whacked the fork in the top of them and put some lard on top and baked them. You don't get a better accompaniment with roast beef than spuds like that, but... Man, the star of the show is this roast beef. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Alrighty. <laughs> I'll stop going on about it because I'm going to sit out and eat the rest of this. So, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate that. If you've made it this far, um, thanks to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Um, we're heading into the new year, so if you want to um, join me on the journey in the new year, I'm going to keep moving forward with this. Um, yeah, hit that subscribe button. Hit that little notification bell icon so you know when I upload videos. I try and do at least one a week, but mostly two a week. But I do work shifts, so if you hit that notification icon, you'll know when I upload them. Alright guys, I will see you all next time.